My name is Donald J. Daniels. My mother decided she wanted to go back to school. And um, since uh, I had a brother, I mean, I still have a brother, and uh, she didn't want to leave both of us with my daddy because I'd been a little too much for him, I would say. So she decided since I was uh, going into the ninth grade and they had uh, a high school on the campus at Morristown Junior College and she was entering in as a freshman in college, I was enter enter entering in as a, as a freshman in high school. So we came up together uh, to go to uh, school here at Marstown. Uh, when we got here, uh, it was a really a, an experience for me because, um, you know, being uh, in the eighth grade, about 15 years old, I guess by that time, by the time we got up here, I was 15. And um, getting on a campus, a college campus with, uh, uh, you know, with junior college uh, students and had high school students too, but it was hard to tell the difference of who was what. But anyway, uh, it was exciting, and uh, my mother checked in at the uh, girls' dormitory, and uh, we, we came out the door from there to um, check me in in the boys' dormitory. And when we walked out the door, there were two uh, college students there, girls, that uh, started talking to my mother. Okay, uh, they wanted to know, you know, where we were from and uh, what we were doing there. Well, uh, my mother told them and that, she was, that we were going over now to check in, check me into high school. I was so small, they didn't think I was in high school. So one of them grabbed me under one arm, another one grabbed me on the other arm, and they would start down the campus with me, and everybody they would see, they would say, look, he's in high school. <laughs> and uh, that went on for a while and, uh, uh, until they got us, got us over there to the boys' dormitory, and then I checked in at the boys' dormitory and uh, got my room. And uh, see, all of this was very new to me because, um, uh, you know, being from a small town, it was very uh, uh, exciting to go to a college campus and going to be living on the campus. I guess one of the good things was that my mother was there, and if anything uh, happened to me or I, anything that I needed, I could call on my mother. But then my mother stayed about a year, and then she transferred to uh, Tennessee State in Nashville. So I was there by myself, and I had to, uh, whatever happened to me, I had to take care of it myself, which was very in instrumental, I would say, in growing up and, and tr trying to do the right things. Well, I got sick one day, and... Um, I was out of school about a week, and I, I'd go into the infirmary, and I was uh, trying to, you know, get medicine for whatever it was that uh, was wrong, a, a bad cold or whatever. Well, they kept giving me aspirin, and aspirin didn't do anything for me. So uh, I got to thinking, and I said, now what would my mother do for me? And I said, oh, I know. And I called... Uh, a friend of mine lived across the hall from me in the dormitory and told him uh, that I wanted him to go to the store and get me some castor oil. And he said, castor oil? You mean you're going to take some castor oil? I said, yes. And he said, well, if you let me watch you take it, I'll go get it. And so I gave him the money and he went to the store and got some castor oil and I told him to bring an orange back too. So he came back with the castor oil and the uh, orange, and I got the orange and I cut a hole in the top of it and punched around inside to make it uh, juicy so that the juice would come out in a hurry. 
I put the, the uh, castor oil on the radiator and let it heat up a little bit so that uh, it would run freely. Well, uh, after I got everything ready, I got the bottle off of the uh, radiator and took the top off and I turned it up and I drank all of it. And I looked around and my buddy was gone. And uh, after I uh, got the orange and got some of the juice to take some of the taste out of my mouth, I went looking for him. And um, I found him in the, in the bathroom throwing up. <laughs> and uh, after that, the next day, I was back in school. Uh, I, that, that was one, one of lesson that I learned, I guess, from home by uh, thinking about what my mother would do. And, and it carried on through that, and so I was back in school and doing uh, whatever I needed to do. And, and one thing that I did while I was sick, I tried to keep up with my lessons. And uh, I was very interested in math. And all, uh, I just got my math book and I said start going through it while I was sick. And that gave me you know, something to do besides think about my illness. And uh, when I got back in, in class, I was way ahead of everybody in math. <laughs> and um, well, that was about uh, uh, all that I can say about that particular story. Okay, from what I can remember, uh, it was usually getting up in the morning, going to breakfast. And at breakfast, uh, it was served family style and they had bowls of food on the table. And uh, we all had to stand and pray. I'm talking somebody would give a prayer, you know, for our food. And when, when they said, hey, hey, man, everybody was reaching for a bowl. <laughs> and um, uh, that way, if you got a bowl, then you can get what you want out of it, and then you can pass it on to somebody else and take the bowl that they have, you know, and so you were able to get your whatever food you wanted. And uh, I found a, a secret in that, doing that, and my secret was that I always go to a table where there were a bunch of girls because they didn't eat very much and uh, whatever they didn't eat, I would eat. <laughs> but uh, usually then after, um, after breakfast, we'd go back to the dormitory and get ready for class. And then uh, we leave the dormitory and go to the uh, administra administration building where they had classes. And uh, they had classes in that building for the junior high school uh, and also for the high school. And uh, we were on the second floor and the, high, uh, the college was on the third, uh, the first and the third floor. And the first floor also had all of the offices for administration there. We go in and we have class and until lunchtime, and then we go back to the uh, cafeteria for lunch, and then we go back to school after lunch and have classes until uh, about three, three thirty or something like that. When we got our class, and then we go back to the dormitory and do whatever we needed to do up until uh, supper time. Then we go eat again <laughs> and uh, go back then. And hopefully, uh, if we hadn't studied our lessons already, hope, hopefully we would. And if there were no other activities going on, um, we would probably go to the um, uh, recreation room where they had a pool table and uh, TV and stuff like that, and we, we could look at television or shoot pool or whatever. Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, like at uh, school, uh, uh, if it wasn't the high school putting on some kind of a play or, uh, uh, well, sometimes they would have um, a, a dance uh, it would be the college doing it. So sometimes you'd have a college uh, dance that you'd go to or, or a high school dance that you'd go to. And they also had uh, a junior college football team that they had their games on the campus. They had uh, a junior, junior college basketball team and uh, we would go to that and they also had a high school basketball team. 
and um, I uh, really wanted to play football, but uh, I, I wouldn't. Weigh, I didn't weigh a hundred pounds soaking wet at that time, so I wasn't able to to play football. And then I was too blind to play basketball. Uh, I didn't get in the, in the glasses until um, uh, I finished the tenth grade. And my mother didn't think that I needed glasses then because I would adapt to the situation. And uh, I guess I was kind of nervy too. I mean, it, I, I wasn't afraid to do what I needed to do in order to see. You know, they had the blackboards at that time and uh, you couldn't, well, I couldn't see from where I was sitting near the back to the, see what was on the back blackboard. So I would just get up from my seat and I move up to the front seat. And uh, if I still couldn't see, I'd get up and go up, stand up there next to the board and um, see what I wanted to see. And uh, evidently it didn't bother the teacher because they didn't say anything to me about it. But that's the reason why I said I was nervy. I, I, I wasn't afraid of, uh, of the teacher, but my father, um, owned a, a, a restaurant, a cafe, or whatever you want to call it, and it was sort of a um, grocery store too, because he had a lot of canned goods there that he would uh, sell to people that weren't close to a grocery store, and um, uh, he'd had you know people come in for breakfast and lunch and dinner, you know. And at lunchtime, it was a, um, a madhouse there then because uh, people worked in a, in a sock factory. I call it a sock factory. They, they made socks and underwear and things like that. And they'd get out for, for uh, lunch and they didn't have, they had less than an hour to get their lunch and get back, you know. So uh, they had to get served in a hurry, you know. So. It got to be real hectic then. I was working, helping him in the restaurant uh, too. And uh, I, uh, I guess I even thought about it one time would be going into the restaurant business. But my daddy told me before he passed that, uh, said, don't go into the restaurant business. Said, it's too much work, you know, to do that. He's working seven days a, a week and, uh, 10 and 12 hours a day, you know. So uh, he told us, to, you know, when he, if he pays, just sell it and split the money up and go on, you know, and do whatever else that you want to, do anything else that you want to, but don't go into the restaurant business. But uh, I think that helped me a lot to be able to deal with people because all kinds of personalities would come in there and you had to wait on them and uh, uh, try to figure out uh, what you can do to please them, you know, or to serve them uh, because you wanted them to be, um, uh, uh, well, one, you actually, you really wanted them to buy something, you know, and, and, and if you get in there and they say something to you that might be offensive or something, you're not supposed to uh, strike back, you know, you just go on and, act like you didn't even hear it. Well, uh, all of this was uh, good for me as a, a child. I was able to uh, learn how to deal with people. Yeah, well, uh, where was your father's restaurant at? It was in Dayton, Tennessee. In Dayton, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. but, didn't have any work study on campus at that time. Uh, during that time, you know, uh, the schools weren't integrated, and uh, uh, you, uh, I guess the, uh, the college had a um, uh, understanding or a deal with uh, uh, the Board of Education in the city of Marstown, and that they would handle the high school, the black, for the blacks, and uh, um, it wasn't until uh, the law was passed that they were going to integrate the schools that uh, the, the uh, high school students stopped going to Marstown. But I think that uh, that was, uh, was an experience that I think 
everybody should have been able to experience because I'm on the campus with a junior college, uh, on a junior college campus in high school, I'm living in the dormitory, so I'm, I'm able to see what they do as a college student, and I'm able to uh, prepare myself to uh, uh, be able to live in the dormitory by myself or eat with a, with a roommate or whatever and uh, know what to do because I didn't have mama and daddy to call on you know, whenever I needed something. And uh, I know after uh, I finished high school, uh, when I went off to college, it, was, it, was, it wasn't uh, a big deal because I'd already been uh, four years on the junior college campus and so that uh, when I went off to high school it was just like going, when I went off to college it was just like going off to high school, you know. I knew what I had to do and I knew how to do it and so that was uh, a big plus in my life. The black children that were high school age, they came to school at Marstown. So we had the ones from out of town, out of state, uh, sometime out of the country. We even had some Africans that came over and went to high school. I'm trying to think, I don't think they went to college, but they went to high school, and some of them might have been in college, you know. But see, we were all there together on the campus. We took classes together and everything like that. It was uh, because um, they didn't have a high school for blacks in Morristown at that time. And they all went to Morristown Junior College. So we said Morristown Junior College High School. And uh, I like to think about like this. Uh, I made friends with uh, uh, all of them, uh, most of the ones that lived out in town. And I have one friend especially that uh, he wanted, always wanted to take me home and uh, uh, so I can meet his mother and father and his uh, brothers and sisters. He would invite me over, uh, especially, you know, uh, to eat, you know, sometimes because that college, uh, the, um, not, uh, the campus food wasn't that good, you know. <laughs> and he'd invite me over to eat sometimes. And so I always told him, I said, now you um, invite me over when your mother's cooking pinto beans. <laughs> so he would invite me over on those days and then she would fuss at him because the pinto beans took the place of meat, you know. And, um, uh, and I always went over on those days and she said, that she'd fuss at him, won't you bring him over on, on another day when we're having meat, you know. And she said, well, he wants to come on the days that they have in pinto beans. <laughs> and that was really, really interesting, too, there. And by, you know, me going over into his neighborhood, I, I met a lot of people that lived around his house. And, and they were more, there were others that lived around there that were in high school also. And I uh, got to meet them. And I didn't have any problems, but I, I know that there were some others that lived on the campus that would have problems when they went to town. Sometimes uh, they would run them back home, back to the dormitory, you know. But I didn't have that problem. And uh, just thinking about it, I think that uh, this uh, uh, working with uh, all different kinds of people in the restaurant, I was able to uh, work with all kinds of people at the college, at the college high school and uh, uh, I just knew how to deal with people. And, and so I didn't have any problems uh, with uh, the people out in town. Well, uh, most of, of the, uh, the, the big games were like um, homecoming, you know. And not only uh, did a lot of people come from town, they had uh, uh, people that had finished up there they would come back for that. That was the time when Border Campus was just full of people, you know. I wanted to play football, but they didn't have a high school football team. If you wanted to play football, you had to play at the junior college. And uh, you know Youngblood, right? 
he played with uh, junior college football when he was in the ninth grade. And I, I think he played all the way through, probably about six years with the, the junior college uh, uh, football team because he played four years in, in uh, high school and two years in college. But I saw him the other day and, and he was just kindly uh, dragging along. I said, I said, blood, and I said, how you doing? He said, I'm all right. Uh, I said, man, you know, when you were in high school, you were playing football with the junior college and uh, uh, I wanted to play and I couldn't. I was too little. He said, I wish I was too little because right now he said, my knees are killing me from playing football, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, now that's uh, kind of a, a summary of what he was telling me. It might not have been exactly like that, but that's the way I remember it. Uh, I tried to play basketball, I couldn't see, <laughs> but I, I tried to play, and, and, and the, the funny thing about that was that in, uh, in elementary school in Dayton, uh, we didn't even have basketball goals. We all get out on the field and we'd play football, you know, and so when I got to Morristown, we were out there on the basketball court and somebody threw me the ball and I took off down the floor going towards my basket, didn't dribble a lick. I got down there and shot, boy, everybody just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to dribble. <laughs> that was interesting too. You know, I finally learned how to do a little bit more than that, but I never, never did get a chance to play on a varsity team, you know, anything like that. I was too little, I couldn't see. And, and uh, oh, I think my sport was uh, track. I ran track. And uh, uh, I was ready for that because um, our, our house in Dayton was about a mile from the restaurant. And I, I would run that mile two or three times a day going back and forth, you know. So I, I was ready to run. <laughs> Well, the first thing that hit my mind when you said that was that uh, uh, going to a, a college, a, a, a junior college and a high school combined, uh, and then seeing men and women, but I, I was particularly interested in the men because they would come to school uh, dressed in suits and ties and this kind of thing, the teachers. And uh, that helped out a lot because uh, over, over the four years there, I got where I was going to class in suit and town every day, you know. And I thought, uh, you know, that was, uh, uh, well, I guess I can say it now that that helped me in, in my career. My, I, I um, uh, got where when I went to college, well, uh, every time I'd go to Spelman's campus to uh, see my wife, I'd have on suit and tie, you know. And uh, I guess I very seldom ever go over there without my suit and tie on, you know. And then um, uh, after, uh, you know, finishing college uh, and pursuing uh, my career, I, I majored in math and min minored in physical education, and I was uh, trained to be a teacher, you know, and I loved math, and so I taught math uh, a couple of years in Cleveland, Tennessee, and then I started looking for a job in Chattanooga because that's where we were living at that time, and I went around different places, and I took a test for Southern Railway. Man said, I scored too high. I said, I don't care about scoring high. I said, I need a job. I got a wife to support, you know. <laughs> and then um, uh, I went to TVA and applied for a job at TVA. And the man that was over the uh, department that did the hiring and the firing, or especially the hiring, he was on the board at uh, the YMCA. So he didn't process my application at TBA, he took it to the YMCA. <laughs> and I, 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 uh, I didn't 
think about that to now. Uh, but they called me in at the Y and uh, they said, I understand that you're looking for a job. I said, yes, I'm looking for a job. And they said, uh, will you be interested in working at the Y? I said, I don't really know. I said, the only thing I know about the YMCA was that they had an organization on campus and I was a member of that organization, but I didn't know they had a building with a gymnasium in it, with a swimming pool in it, and uh, offices space, and uh, you know, just some everything in, in one building. And I said, but uh, it would be all right with me. And so, say this was on uh, a Thursday that uh, I uh, went there, and they said, well, you come back Monday ready to work. <laughs> and, and the guy that was, uh, the general manager of, of the Y at that time, uh, you know, he's the one who told me to come back Monday ready to work. I came back Monday and he had left the Y and went to Atlanta and got a job at the YMCA in Atlanta. So I was the only one there. I didn't know nothing <laughs> about the Y. And uh, they had a secretary there, her name was Miss Truss. I had to go talk to her, and she told me, you know, what I had to do, you know. And so I worked a while with that and got kind of used to what was going on, and we had uh, YMCA clubs in the schools. I, I would go there, and I'd find somebody that would take over uh, a, a, a club in the school. And uh, uh, I, then I'd have, uh, when there was a baseball season, they would have a basketball team in all of these organizations and they would come to the Y and we played basketball and football season, the same thing. They didn't come to the Y, then we'd play football on their campus, wherever they were. But I ran into a guy at one school that uh, he seemed to be very interested in the Y. So I talked him into uh, uh, resigning from uh, as teacher as a school and start working at the YMCA and we started working together and man we had that Y really working I mean uh, uh, it seemed like every mother in town knew what was going on and every one of them would crowd those kids in there on us you know like we have uh, what's called a sleepover you know we they would get them on Friday nights and they sleep over to Saturday sometimes Saturday when the parents came and got them. And uh, we've had as many as 160 boys in there at one time. And uh, we were able to make it through that. And then uh, the mother said, well, what about the girls? I said, I don't want no girls. And they said, well, uh, we want you to have it. So I had to go get some uh, uh, either uh, high school girls or some women that uh, uh, you know, didn't have a job or, or I didn't have uh, a lot of kids to take care of and they would come in and help us with uh, the girls and we had more girls to come in there on, on a Friday night and stay the Saturday morning than we did boys. And I got one story I like to tell about that. One night, uh, everybody was bedded down and somebody just kept talking, yappy, 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 yappy. And so I finally I got over there to where this girl was and I, I told her, I said, I said, baby, you need to be quiet. I said, the people are sleeping here um, and they can't go to sleep for you. And I said, uh, 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 why is it that you are, why aren't you trying to go to sleep? Why aren't you being quiet? And she said, well, uh, I came to a slumber party. And said, so when, when, when I go to the slum party, that's what they do. They talk all night long. <laughs> I just told her, I said, well, well, you go on, keep on talking. She said, but just don't talk so loud. <laughs> that was very, very interesting uh, to me. And I think I know her now, the one that was doing all the talking. She's grown, got children now herself. <laughs> you know, one, one thing that uh, I thought about Marstown being at Marstown College, it really prepared me uh, to do anything that I wanted to do b because I was around well-educated people and uh, well-educated men. Uh, and that was uh, uh, something that I would always look at. I'd watch 
them and see how they uh, dress and how they act and, and that kind of thing. And I think that we need that for our children now. I think that uh, if more people went to a school like Marstown, that uh, we wouldn't have all of this gang-related uh, uh, shootings and things that they have in now. I just don't think they have it. And if I might uh, say this, you can delete this if you want to, but uh, I think one of the worst things that ever happened was to have projects. Now, uh, and that is that they put everybody in the project that are on the same social economic level. And they have nothing to look to in order to uh, better themselves. They, they can't go no further than the level that they own. Well, uh, if they had projects, it would be fine if they would let some lawyers and doctors and school teachers, if they let them live there too, you know, but uh, you have to have uh, you can't make but a certain amount of money in order to get in there. And, and so this leaves uh, boys and girls growing up in the project looking at these dope dealers come in and they driving these big fine cars and they say, I want to be like that. They don't have preachers and doctors and lawyers, school teachers in the project. And uh, that's the only thing I really have against the projects is, is that um, they are a bunch of it, putting everybody in there on the socioeconomic level, but they have no desire to go any further than that level. I, I, would, I would really love to see Marstown College back like it was, um, where uh, they had uh, a junior college and, and they had uh, high school combined. I would like to see that and, uh, uh, you know, have students to come down like I did and see what was going on at that time because uh, if you, uh, you know, see uh, well-educated men, then you want to be that way too, you know, and dress like they dress and, and this kind of thing. And, and uh, uh, people say that education is the key to stopping all of the crime and stuff. That's not the key. The key is, uh, is more than education. You got to know how to act, you know. You got to know um, how even to dress. Uh, you know, got to understand how to get along with people and, uh, and, and understand that whenever anything happens, you don't have to solve the problem by, with, by using a gun, you know. One interesting story, the first year I was at Morristown, well, I got two of them. I, I tell, tell one, the first one, it was a, a, a really horrific uh, incident. Uh, that first year I was there, uh, Christmas time rolled around, everybody went home for Christmas. And there's one guy there, he, uh, he was afraid of a knife. I mean, if you got a butter knife, you could run him all over the campus with it, you know. He was just afraid of, of a knife. He was from Chicago. And um, he went home for Christmas, and when he came back, he had a gun. And uh, the, the administration or nobody, dormitory counselors or nothing, knew anything about it. So uh, after we got back from our Christmas vacation, uh, I remember going to uh, supper, I call it supper, and getting out and come back in and I heard a lot of noise in this room. So I, he had a door where all he had to do was just bump it hard and it would fly open. So I bumped that door and it flew open. And he turned around and had that gun right, right in my stomach and he was clicking uh, the trigger, no bullets in it, and I almost fainted, you know. Well, uh, not long after that, another guy came, did the same thing I did, and he scared him to death too. And then he said something about, I'm going to show you something. And so he went into his uh, uh, trunk, 
and pulled out some bullets and put in that gun. Uh, maybe, maybe one or uh, two, I don't know, but I know he put a bullet in the gun. And then, you know how you spin the revolver, uh, spin, that, spin that around? He spin it around and he pointed at that guy that came in after I did and pulled the trigger and shot him in the stomach. And what they call it, Russian roulette, I think that's what they called it. And I was standing behind the one that got shot. I couldn't move for a while. And, but when I was able to move, I looked around, there was a guy asleep on the bed. He didn't know what was going on. But, but I shot out of that room and I went around to my room and got in the bed. And the police came and they took, him, took the boy to the hospital and uh, after about a week, he died. And then they had a trial. Oh man, that was, that was really uh, hard on me. I'm, I'm here in, in, in school, 15 years old, by myself, and I had to deal with something like that. So my mother asked me, you wanna come home? And I guess I made uh, a wise decision for once, uh, I said, no, I won't stay. So I stayed and eventually uh, everything calmed down again. Uh, we didn't forget, it just calmed down again and we, I didn't have any more uh, kinds of experiences like that. Well, uh, while, while I was at Morristown, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, they did that I think was uh, uh, very influential on me and uh, it's something that I think people need to do now. We had Vesper service every Wednesday we were required to go. We had church service every Sunday we were required to go. And uh, uh, when I'm at home uh, when I was at home, uh, my mama didn't say that I had to go. I knew I had to go because uh, uh, she wasn't going to leave me at home by myself. And uh, we, we would go to church, and I tell it like this, that we would get there about 9.30 in the morning. And when we were get back home, it would be about 9.30 that night. and. Uh, between the, they had, it was three services that they had uh, that day. They had that, uh, well, we had Sunday school. Uh, we didn't call that a service. Uh, then we had a, a 11 o'clock service. We had three o'clock service. Then we had seven o'clock service. And uh, in between times, uh, we would play and eat. Uh, my mother would always carry something to eat, uh, so after the 11 o'clock service, we would eat. And then um, we would go uh, uh, play, and the church was up, uh, built up high off the ground because there was a lot of flooding that would happen at times, and in, in order to keep the church for, from flooding, they built it up high. And so we could go under the church and play, you know. So we did that, and then when we got tired, uh, we just go in there and stretch out on the benches. Uh, you know, they, they didn't have these modern day uh, pews that they have nowadays. They had homemade pews, and you know, like they had a little gap in between the wood about like that, and you sleep, uh, go to sleep on that, and you'd have a print on, on your face when you wake up. Well, that's what we did, and, uh, uh, I got so used to going to church that on Sunday I had to find somebody, a church somewhere to go to. Uh, well, being that, uh, you know, I, I was in the ministry, I'm still in the ministry, but I was in full-time ministry. Uh, I, was, I was checking that the other day. Uh, actually, I had a church for, not, not a church, I had churches for 30 years. And then uh, when you count the time, when I was called in the ministry, which was uh, uh, 1976. Uh, it was about 40 years ago when I uh, 
I was in the ministry. I mean, I'm still in the ministry because uh, after I retired, I went, I'd go back to my home church and uh, I helped my uh, preacher out. I, first time I went back after retiring, uh, I was at, back there in the pews and I couldn't stay still because I wasn't used to being in the pews. I was, I was just scooting around and going on and every time I got a chance to get up, I'd get up and go somewhere. And after service was over that day, I went down and told him, I said, man, you got to give me something to do. So uh, 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 now when I go to service on uh, any Sunday, uh, he always calls on me to uh, dismiss the service, you know. So I go down and uh, get the mic, and uh, my wife says I talk too much. And instead of doing, just dismissing the service, I just get to talking and uh, uh, telling what the, what the preacher said and what it meant to me, you know. And, but anyway, she tries to stop it, but she, she can't stop that unless she wires my mouth up. <laughs> uh, I do that every Sunday, and on the first Sundays I do communion for them, you know. So I was, I'm just glad and uh, thank God for allowing me to do something instead of just sitting in the pews, you know. Uh, I have one brother and no sisters. But I grew up in a little town and I had a lot of cousins and uh, uh, they had a lot of children. And so I didn't like for a sister because I had uh, female uh, uh, cousins. And um, uh, my, yeah, I told you my father had a restaurant and we worked there. Then my mother was a school teacher and after she finished her education, and uh, she um, uh, taught at the high school there in Dayton. Uh, well, it was, well, it was the high school, well, it was grades one through 12. <laughs> and uh, I decided one day I was going to uh, go to school in Dayton instead of going to Morristown. And so I went over there, went to school in Dayton, and whenever I, I was in my mother's room, and whenever I had a question, I said, Mama, so and so and so and so. She said, I'm Mrs. Daniels. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was funny to me. But uh, I, I kept getting in trouble there in Dayton. I said, Well, I better go back to Marstown. So I went on back to Marstown. And after um, finishing uh, high school, uh, I went to Atlanta to Morehouse. And, that's how I met my wife at Spelman. She was at Spelman. And uh, at the senior year, uh, at the senior year we got married and now we have uh, three sons and four grandchildren. <laughs> and uh, that uh, the baby uh, is uh, four years old now. And she follows Papa around all over the place. So one morning uh, early, uh, everybody was asleep. She woke up, I guess, before everybody. Then. And when I, I was in the bed, she came in the bedroom. And you know, you can feel people looking at you. And so she just stood there looking at me. And I turned over and I kept feeling something. And I said, well, wait a minute here. I don't know what's going on here. So I opened my eyes and she was about that close to my face. And she said, Papa. I said, what, baby? I'm hungry. <laughs> Will you fix me something to eat? I said, yeah, I'll fix you something to eat, baby. So I got up and fixed her food. I'm really enjoying my grandchildren. Uh, it, it gives you a headache when they're there. You're so glad to see them come, but you're just as glad to see them leave, too. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, you, uh, you get a lot of rest, and I, I've, I've enjoyed them all the time and I'm, in, I'm, I'm interested in seeing how they're going to turn out, you know. Uh, and I pray for that all the time. Her name was Vernal, V-E-R-N-A-L. Uh, her maiden name was Pickle. Uh, her, grand, her daddy's name was uh, Charlie Pickle. Uh, 
And uh, we got joked about that uh, being named Pickle a lot. And my daddy's name was Otto, O-T-T-O, Daniels. And uh, what, what, do you remember the name of the school that she taught at in Dayton? It was, it was uh, Dayton High School, no, Carver High School. It was the name, that, that was the last name it was, but she, she taught uh, at Dayton Elementary School. Uh, they eventually built uh, 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 a high school you know, not, not far from the elementary school, but at first all 12 grades were in the uh, Dayton Elementary School, I call it now. It wasn't called Dayton, it was just Dayton School, I guess. It had all 12 grades in there. And you could uh, start in the first grade and, and after uh, the first grade, you go to another room, that'd be the second grade. And uh, you just kept going all the way around the building. And eventually you reach the eighth grade and then you start going to high school, you know. Ninth grade. I left. I left uh, after finishing eighth grade, and that's where I got to Marstown.